What is going on everybody? Welcome back to this episode of Home Built Workshop. Today I'm going to revisit making finger joints to make this really cool looking keepsake box out of lace wood. Check it out. So if you guys have seen that earlier video that I did with the plywood finger joint boxes, you'll know in that video that I mentioned that I want to try these out of solid wood, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So I've got this cool piece of lace wood that I'm gonna use for the sides. It's got an amazing figure, and I have this piece of quarter inch plywood that I'm gonna use for the top and the bottom. I got my plan here on this handy dandy piece of masking tape. Let's get this thing done. Before I can begin making any finger joints, I first need to joint one edge of this lace wood and then I'll cut it down to make up the four sides. Man, I've never really worked with this kind of wood, but it is very splintery on the edges. I've got one, two, three, four splinters already. Just cutting those down to size. This is gonna, this one's gonna hurt a little bit. <laughs> So when you're working with a splintery wood like this, please be safe. If you can wear protective gloves, please wear them, but do not wear them while you're using some sort of machine that could potentially catch the glove and pull your hand into it. Other than that, I do recommend wearing gloves if you're sanding or something like that, because these hurt. <laughs> so now my pieces have one jointed edge. The other edge is rough. I want to clean that up, but I only want to remove just a tiny bit basically just jointing this edge. Here's a really quick and simple way to do this. With my blade raised up, I'm going to take the fence, slide my piece into the blade, and I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on that blade while I lock the fence down. That's gonna cause that blade to deflect a little bit, so when you back your piece out, springs back over and now you know you're only going to remove a tiny bit along the edge of that wood. If I line it up with the edge of the blade it's barely half of the blade is in contact with the wood so it's just going to shave off a little bit which will leave me with a nice edge and hopefully a little bit less splintery. Now I'm going to lower the height of my blade to half the thickness of these boards. I'll bring the fence in to about a quarter of an inch and I'll cut a dado around the inside edge of all those pieces. This will be to accept the bottom panel. Now my blade is not wide enough to make a quarter inch slot in one pass, so I'm gonna nudge the fence over a little bit and then make a second pass. I am pretty sure that I just made a mistake. I cut this thinking that I was going to miter these at 90 degrees, which would hide the end of this. I wasn't thinking that finger joint is gonna have this end exposed. Now I'm not gonna waste this piece of wood. I'm gonna move on with this project. I just know that I may have to try to hide this somehow by patching in a piece, or if it's not all that visible, I'm not gonna worry about it. I just want you guys to be aware of this potential issue. If you're going to build a box like this, make sure you try to take into account all cuts, slots, grooves, dados, all that kind of thing before you move forward. And then you won't end up with a visible slot like this. I need to make a very similar groove across the top, but after this one, I'm going to wait until the finger joints are done. Then I can hopefully position them to where it lands where it won't be visible. Now, if you referred back to my other finger joint video, you'll know that I switched out my blade for this 24 tooth rip blade. And that is because it has a square profile on top of the teeth. This is a full kerf blade. I'm gonna use this same blade for this project. So now I need to swap that blade out. Now I'm not gonna go into details with how to change your table saw blade because each machine could be different, but please make sure you work safe. Don't hurt yourself. Get your blade installed correctly. So now I can grab my super simple finger joint jig. If you wanna see how I made this, I'll put a link to the video where I made this and the other finger joint boxes down below in the description. In that video, I go a little bit more in depth on how to set this up and get it working correctly. 
After making some test cuts and some scrap, I've got these things fitting really good. If you find that your finger joints are too loose, you need to loosen your clamps and you need to move your jig so that the spacer block goes away from the blade. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to wrap your head around how that works. It almost would think that it's making it tighter, but it doesn't, it makes it looser. I actually write that on the back of my jig so that I never forget which way I need to move it. All right, here we go. Don't ruin it, dude. Now I can just start cutting the finger joints on this first piece. Each time you make a cut, you just move it over and place the previously cut joint down on the spacer block. Then we'll use the piece we just cut to line up the mating piece. And then once you have that first cut made, then you just go to town using your spacer block to keep everything aligned. I like it. Now I can just continue cutting the finger joints for the rest of this box. It's really important to number your sides as you go so that you can keep each side together and not cut them on the wrong side. So now that I have all the finger joints cut, I'm just gonna fit this up, kind of a test fit. See where we need to go next. So I've been thinking about this for a few minutes and I think I've come up with what I want to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna cut the bottom panel down to size. I'm going to cut a couple small slivers to fill these holes. I'm gonna glue the entire box up without the top. I'll glue in my little repair splines. And I'll trim them off flush. To even up the ends of the splines, instead of sanding, I'm gonna use a flush trim bit in my router. As I'm standing down this side, I'm noticing there's some gaps right here. I don't know if I didn't have the clamp in the right spot, I didn't have enough pressure or what, but I wanna to try to fill those gaps a little bit. They really look kinda of terrible. So I've dumped some of the sawdust out of my sander. I'm gonna use that to patch up those gaps. I'm gonna first try to mash some of it down into those cracks. And then I'll use a piece of sandpaper to help force it down in there. So now that I have this gap filled with the sawdust, now I'm gonna use some CA glue and lock that stuff into place, which should fill the gap pretty well. So the CA glue that I'm gonna use this time is made by Starbond. My friends over at Starbond sent me some samples to try out, so thank you so much, Starbond. I really do appreciate it. One of the things that I think is really cool is their glues come with these little whip tips. A lot of other manufacturers, you have to buy these things separate. These things are great for guitar work and other fine work where you need a tiny little tip. These things come with several of those things. You don't have to buy them separate. It's really cool. If you guys are interested in trying some of the Starbond for yourself, there is an affiliate link down below in the description. You can hit that link, head on over to the Starbond website and check some out for yourself. I think you're gonna like it. So far, I'm really digging it. Now I'm gonna adjust my table saw blade to almost the thickness of these boards. I'll bring the fence in so that my cut lands in between two finger joints. And now I can proceed to cut this box in half. The reason I didn't raise the blade the full thickness of these boards is because I wanna create a tiny little bit of wood on the inside, which is gonna hold the box together. If you cut all the way through, then you have to add some shims to keep everything straight as you finish your cuts. This way you don't have to worry about the shims and you can just cut it apart with a handsaw. Cool. <laughs> 
a block plane makes quick work of cleaning up that little ridge that's left over. Now with those edges cleaned up, we are now ready to route a rabbit along the inside so that we can inset that top panel. To do that, I have a rabbiting bit with a bearing on the top that's gonna give me a 3 8 inch rabbit around the inside of that. I'm gonna pop this guy in my little router table and we're gonna get this thing done. Since the size of this rabbit is kind of large, I'm going to make several passes until I get to the depth that I need. After a few minutes squaring up the corners with a chisel, I'm going to flip the piece over and route a chamfer along the top edge. This is purely decorative. And since that chamfer bit uses a bearing, I don't get a square corner with this either, but that's easy to fix with a chisel. Now I can cut the top panel down to size. Ah, I like it. So now that I have that top panel glued in, I want to address one thing that some of you may or may not be concerned with, and that's the fact that I glued this panel in place. I am not worried at all about this thing breaking apart because I glued it in, mostly because this is not a solid wood panel. This is a plywood, and also these strips are just too thin to really create any sort of movement where I'm worried about this thing coming apart. It's gonna be just fine. Let's keep moving along. So now I'm gonna begin laying out for the hardware. I'm gonna install all of the hardware prior to finishing. This means that I'm going to lay out and drill for all of the screw holes. Before I install the brass screws, I'll use a small steel screw to help cut the threads. This will help minimize breaking the delicate brass screws. This part of the process is really tedious, especially because I know I have to take this all back off, but believe me, it is totally worth doing this process now rather than at the end and breaking the screw off. Nice. So now that I have all the hardware on there, I need to take it all back off so that we can do some more sanding and get a finish applied. Now, uh -huh. you thought I was gonna bore you with all that hardware removal after you had to watch me put it on. Nah, we're gonna jump right to the sanding. I'm going to begin the final sanding by using some wipe-on polyurethane and sanding that into the pores of the wood. This is going to fill some gaps in the finger joints and make them look a lot better. I've created a separate video outlining just this process. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the video description. But basically what we're doing is creating a slurry of sawdust and polyurethane which then fills the pores and gaps in the wood. Once I've done that to all the finger joints, I can just apply some more wipe on poly like I normally would. I'm using a satin poly for this. We're gonna be really high tech with the inside of this. <laughs> oh, wow, that's cool. That looks cool. After three coats of wipe-on poly and sanding in between coats, this is looking really nice. It's got a nice satin sheen to it. It is time to put all that hardware right back on. The last one. And that wraps up this keepsake box. Man, I really like the way this turned out. The finger joints turned out so much better using solid wood than it did the first time around when I used some cheap plywood. Man, I'm really, really happy with the way this turned out. And the figure on this lace wood, how cool is that?
So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this project. I know I enjoyed putting this together, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. If you got something out of this video, consider hitting that subscribe button, as I have a lot of other project videos on my channel you might be interested in checking out. Thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Isn't this thing awesome? Subscribe if you like it. Papa! Ow! That hurt. <laughs> Here we go. Fire in the hole. Are you sure my face is chocolate? Why is that always so terrifying?